welcome to the morning session. So um, yesterday we were talking about the self and the body and the various different characteristics to try and understand the self and the body. And we've been through this through the workshop, but just to recap very briefly and quickly, um, we talked about the needs of the self and the body, that the self, the need is for happiness. It has to do with feelings. It is something qualitative, this need, and it is required in continuity because you can ask yourself and see that you don't want to be unhappy at any moment. On the other hand, if you look at the needs of the body for food, for clothes, and so on, it is a physiochemical need and it is required from time to time. You, you know, it is not required by in continuity. And when we looked at the activities in the self and the body, the activities in the self of the imagination that is going on within us, we can directly observe and see that these thoughts, these feelings are there. Constantly we are feeling something, thinking something. So it is a continuous activity that is going on within us. In comparison to that in the body, the activities are temporary. So this gives a hint of the continuity of the self as opposed to that of the body. For the body, we are able to see that it is temporary. When the body is born, there itself is a determined fact that ultimately this body will grow, will age, and will die. So it is a temporary unit. When it comes to the self, we may not be able to observe directly at this point, but at least that hint of continuity we can get from the needs being continuous, the activities being continuous. And of course, we um, have gone through this that while the body's needs can be fulfilled by the physical, physiochemical things outside, the needs of the self for happiness have nothing to do with the physical facility. That need for happiness can be fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling within the self. Then we looked at the third difference between the two, the responses of the body and the self. And we talked about this knowing, assuming, recognizing and fulfilling. While the body has the response of merely recognizing and fulfilling. And this is something definite. It has no choice in the matter. The self, in the case of the self, the recognizing and fulfilling is based on the knowing or the assuming in the self. If you can go to the next slide, uh, Taraji. Yeah. So here you can see that knowing is, when we are saying knowing, we are talking of seeing everything the way it is, seeing the reality the way it is, in its completeness, directly, not through the eyes, not how we see it as we are seeing today, just, you know, uh, how we see the units. In fact, if we see our basic way of looking at things is we look at the units and it almost seems like wherever there is no unit there is nothing there of course in science we study about air and this and atmosphere and all of those but if you see our focus is largely on the units and it almost seems like there is a gap between the units and there's nothing there other than the units that is how we look at things. But to be able to see the reality in its completeness would mean that we would be able to see even the more subtle reality there, the space, and how we are all as units connected, submerged in this space and how we are all connected. So there, if we see that 
in the completeness, the reality, then we may be able to also see that it is definite. It has continuity and it has universality. Even if we are not able to see this reality right now, a glimpse of it is available in us in the form of the natural acceptance. And this is why we see that the natural acceptance, it is something that is universal that every one of us seems to have the same natural acceptance. Every one of us um, find that whenever we refer to it, the answer we get is very definite, right? And it's always there. It was there when we were a small child. It is there as adults. It is there in the elderly. It seems to be there. It was there hundreds of years ago, it will be there. So that continuity or that universality, all of that, we get a glimpse through the natural acceptance. But of course, to directly observe the reality, it will take more competence, it will take more effort. So we can do that, but meanwhile, that glimpse is there. On the other hand, if we assume something of the reality, if we accept the reality um, as something which it is not, then this acceptance will obviously, that view, that, that perception will not match the truth. So we may or may not know but when we accept something, this acceptance may be matching with what is actually the truth or it may not be matching. So we may have assumed something and that makes a lot of difference. So if we have assumed that we are all just units that are separate, then we may not see our relatedness with each other. And if we don't see our relatedness, my whole way of recognizing and fulfilling, recognizing and fulfilling means my relationship with the other human beings, with the rest of nature, that will be colored by my own assumption that there is no relatedness. So then I look at every other person as different from myself. I see the nature as something separate from me. I don't see that connection. And you'll find that all of our living, all of everything that we do, decisions that we make, everything is colored by our assumptions. So if we are not sure of whether our assumptions are right or wrong, right or wrong meaning if they are in line with the reality or not in line with the reality, then we will just keep floundering. We will just keep making random decisions and going about living life with those assumptions without knowing whether it is true for me or not true because we are not able to observe the reality. So therefore this whole effort to try and see this by referring to the natural acceptance, which is what we'll be doing in the exercises also in more depth. And ultimately it makes a lot of difference. So if I, if I give a simple example, if I don't have happiness within me, I am constantly looking for happiness outside. I assume that this happiness I'm going to get from outside somewhere. So a simple thing like, you know, if I am, say, I have all kinds of assumptions in me that the other person is different. And then what if that person doesn't like me? I feel lonely and I want to be with others, but I have all these fears. I have all these anxieties that the other person may not accept me. What if that person rejects me? Uh, what if that person doesn't like me? So what do I do? I avoid being with another person. And I'm not even aware that this is something that is 
not naturally acceptable to me. And somewhere it is creating this conflict within me, but I don't pay attention to it and I subdue it and it is there within me and it continues to be there. And then one day I might be watching a movie or something and I see two people who seem to be, you know, or a few people who are having fun together and I'm sitting all alone in my house and watching the TV. And again, that, that feeling that I had subdued, it comes up. And again, I start feeling lonely. I was fine till I saw that, but again, this pops up. So these assumptions keep popping up every now and then without our conscious realizing. And which assumption is right, which assumption is not. We have a lot of confusion Therefore, these doubts and therefore the, you know, the conflicts, the unhappiness within. So ultimately, we have to directly observe, see what is our natural acceptance and see if our assumptions are matching or not matching and accordingly, you know, go forward with that. So this is what we were discussing and uh, yesterday, we had asked for everybody to um, um, do one uh, reflection. Um, if anybody would like to share, we had said that when you're doing all the various activities throughout the day, try to see if you are paying attention largely to problems outside, that is what is not being done right outside in society or if you're paying attention to your role in solving the problem. And try to see that these thoughts are there continuously in you. And along with every thought, you are either happy, happy meaning you're comfortable within, or you're unhappy, uncomfortable within. And if you um, were able to do a, this exercise or if you were able to take time and reflect on this, um, we'll be happy to have your sharing. So ultimately, any assumption that we have, unless we know whether it is in line with the actual reality or not, we will keep changing our behavior based on the assumption. So whenever my assumption changes, my behavior also changes. If I assume something to be true, then I base it everything on that. And I behave accordingly. So if I have this assumption that um, I have a relationship with my immediate family members, but I don't have a relationship with my neighbors, then I will behave a certain way with my family members and I will behave a different way with the neighbors. If I have an assumption tomorrow, supposing, you know, in my experience, my neighbor does something nice for me, now I have this assumption that they are for my, they are doing something for my happiness. So I now start having a different kind of feeling for my neighbor. But somebody from, you know, another location, I may have a different kind of feeling for them and so on. So our behavior keeps changing based on any assumption that may keep changing within us. So our behavior becomes indefinite. Sometimes we talk to the other person nicely. Sometimes we talk to the other person with a lot of anger and so on, based on our so many assumptions that we go with, our conduct is indefinite. And there is certainly a dependence Right? We are not free because based on something that we got from outside, we are living our life without realizing. 
on the other hand if we base things on our natural acceptance that glimpse of the reality that we have within us and try to live accordingly slowly we are going through this process of self verification now you know i am trying to verify all my assumptions are they in line with my natural acceptance or not in line so these assumptions or you can say acceptances that i have for instance this example we were taking of having a different kind of feeling for different types of people or different uh, what i have classified say as one side being the victim the other side being the perpetrator of the crime i have different kinds of feelings for both sets of people but if i can verify through my natural acceptance and i slowly get to this process of being able to see the truth directly to be able to see the space directly to be able to see my relatedness with everybody directly now nobody needs to tell me that i do have a relationship with every other human being not just the victim but also the person who committed the crime so now my behavior can be definite with each and every human being not bifurcated not have different set of behaviors for one type of people or who i have classified as being related to and different set of behavior for those that i don't see my relatedness with so in that way my conduct becomes definite and this is true for many many things that we keep doing every day we are making small decisions that are um affecting us and this state that we are in within that we are not referring to we are looking outside and doing many things outside without really having that clarity of you know um the fact that many of these assumptions that we are going by they are just assumptions we have not verified them so ultimately we have to verify on the basis of our natural acceptance can we go forward please yes so this process can be um sort of um earlier it was said that values cannot be taught now with all, you know so much work that has happened so many changes that people have experienced we are witnessing something that we can see that yes it can be taught and it can be done through education so that with that education we can change all these deep rooted assumptions that we may have we can change our sanskars and bring it in line with what is the reality what is actually the reality and that can be a whole you know um encompassing solution what we call resolution of the problem but if we do just patchy if we work with just assumptions and we don't have clarity about the whole then there will be many problems and we keep trying to fix problems one by one slowly it's like um if i don't see the body as a whole i think okay you know i need to do something when there is a problem in the heart but when i go to fix the heart the medicine i use may damage the liver and when i go to do something with the liver then i may damage the kidney and this you will see that this happens with medication when we don't have that clear picture of the whole how we make mistakes or how we try to patch up things on a local basis and we may be making many mistakes with that but ultimately we need an all encompassing solution what we calling resolution yes next slide please so um the important thing that uh we can note is that the need of the self for happiness 
is fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling within the self. So these are also activities of consciousness. So the need of the consciousness is fulfilled from within the consciousness by the activities of the consciousness. We need not try to work for this happiness from outside. Isn't it? Next slide. And when we look at the material part, the body part, the need of the body for physical facility is a need that is a material need. It is fulfilled by physiochemical things, which are material in nature. So the need of the material body is fulfilled by material things. The need of the consciousness is fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling, which are the activities of the consciousness. Now, we, if, if we have that clarity, then we will work accordingly, make effort accordingly, isn't it? Next slide, please. Yeah. So when we don't see this, when we go by the assumption that we are the body, because that's what we see through the gross eyes and what appears to be the reality to us, then we make a lot of assumptions based on this, because I think I am the body. So I now see my need as the need of the body and I mix up the two. So while I may need respect, rather than seeing that feeling of respect within myself, I try to get this respect from outside. So I may wear, you know, very fancy clothes when I go out. I may uh, start working on how, you know, how best I can impact the other person, right? I may speak with a different accent. I may speak in a put on kind of voice because I'm trying to, um, I'm consciously thinking of what the other person must be thinking about me and will the other person respect me? So I may be putting on an accent to impress the other person because I think I will get more respect from there. Or I may wear very expensive kind of clothes because somewhere I may have this assumption that you know it reflects that I have more money and so the person will reflect me. I may go with many assumptions. But ultimately to be able to see that this need was of the self and I needed to fulfill it through the self. I didn't have to go through the body. I didn't have to look for it through the body because there I am bound to be, I am setting myself up for this unhappiness within because ultimately that will not happen. That, that feeling within myself until and unless I have it within me, I will keep trying to search outside and still have that void within me. And this need within me right, for happiness, for all these feelings that are naturally acceptable to me, this need is continuous. So even for one moment, I don't want to be without that feeling. So when I try to accomplish it through the body, now I'm trying to get it through physical facility. Now it seems that my need for physical facility is unlimited because I'm confusing the self with the body. I'm confusing who I am as being the body. So everything I try to do, I try to do with the body as the focus. So like that. And ultimately, we keep gathering more and more and more physical facility. And it still seems like we don't have enough because that void is still within us because we haven't taken care of the feeling within. So if I keep feeling that I don't have enough, I feel deprived, I keep making effort for more and more and more physical facility in whatever way I can. 
and I keep accumulating and I still feel deprived. So this cycle keeps going on and I'm still unhappy. Because somewhere I thought that when I have enough physical facility, I will be happy. So rather than base my happiness on the outside, on the physical facility, on what must be done in order to be happy, I, if I have that clarity that my happiness has to do with my feeling and with my um, being able to see the reality, being able to have that right understanding. When I have the right understanding, then I also see my relatedness with everybody. And then I have the right feeling. Then I don't have to make undue effort to have this right feeling within. And I can be happy. And with that harmony within me, then I can work outside and do whatever is required outside that has to be done. So I can be happy and do that work outside rather than doing the work so that I can be happy. So we'll try to do this for today. We'll try to see um, in the whole day when we are doing various activities and all of that, are we postponing our happiness to after the activity is done? That means we have some expectation and if that expectation is met, only then we are happy. Or are we trying to see if we can be happy and then do what we need to do? And just keep it as an open observation and we'll take your observations tomorrow.